All right, here we are, we're back. My name is Cody Shane. In the last video, we went out and shot some photos of planes from a parking lot. If you didn't see that video, I'll post it somewhere. I decided to split this up and make a second video of how I edit those photos. And I decided to bring it into my, this is my dining room. You can see obviously refrigerator, teapot, whatever that is. Um, I'm gonna do all the editing on iPad Pro. Um, I also usually use uh, iPad mini. Just because this has a bigger screen, it makes it a little bit easier for you to see. I'm just gonna, a little top-down shot and that way you can kind of follow along with what i'm doing i'm gonna make this video as fast as possible it's quick and easy just to show exactly how i usually edit photos of planes i think it's worth noting that there's different kinds of aviation photography um, what i'm editing right now is just commercial planes coming in super simple of course if smaller jets and things like that could also come in on that same runway but next month i'll be making a video of shooting from a plane of other planes in formation so that'll be really cool hopefully i'll have that up in about a month or so so it's important to sort those photos and then i'll show you exactly what i do okay hopefully this focuses well and you can see what i'm doing i as you guys can probably tell i've never done any of this before um, as far as recording a video or whatever i'm also learning how to use luma fusion so maybe i'll make a video on how to do that at some point as well but i use this little uh contraption here USB-C to A, USB-A to micro SD and SD, um, you know, little dongle guy to import all these photos. I took about 70 photos while I was there. So I've already gone through all of those photos and starred. I just, I just picked this because I knew I had not done this on any other photos, done five stars and a flag. So we'll start with this photo here. Um, just go here, edit this. I mean, it's pretty good already on its own. It's quite in focus, you know, uh, looks decent. The front here is, oh yeah, it looks great once you really zoom in, but um, I feel like we can make it a little bit better. So first thing I'm gonna do, go here to light, bring this exposure up kind of a, a lot, maybe one four, pretty good. Um, you can really see these little spots that were on my lens. Uh, we'll clean those up in just a minute. Uh, let's see, maybe highlights down a little bit. 10 or so. Um, it's nice too, you can just kind of tap here on the ends and it jumps by five. So highlights down a little bit, shadows usually can bring those up. I mean, it's nice when you're running on something quick like a iPad Pro, you can see what the difference really is if you go all the way on these sliders. So I'll bring it up maybe 15 or so, 12, 13, who knows, 17. Whites will bump those down a little bit. Again, you can see what happens if you move it all the way. So there, bring it down to about 14, 15, whatever. Blacks, play with those. Oh yeah, you can really see on that line. So I'm gonna bring it down to about 25 or so. And I think that's starting to look pretty good. And then we'll go down to color, see what we do here. Um, it's a pretty good temperature already i mean you can play with that of course as always with that a little bit but it really makes the clouds look a little bit ridiculous so i think i'll leave that about where it's at if you do mess with any of these you just double tap it, it goes right back to where it's supposed to be let's see tint everything again i think it looks i think it looks pretty good where it's at vibrance i usually bring up just a little bit just to kind of make it pop i know some people like to look a little more natural i like it to be kind of in between I've noticed that photos with more vibrance, more saturation kind of hit a little bit more on things like Instagram and stuff when you're scrolling through on a mobile phone. So mobile phone, he says mobile phone. So I think that's good color wise. I think that looks, you know, true to life for the most part. That's what a United plane looks like. Close that, we'll go over to the effects. This kind of helps when the photo is not perfectly in focus. So I'm bringing the texture down just a little bit, just because there's some spots that could use a little bit of a smoothing. You can see kind of what that does. It makes it look a little completely ridiculous, like it's underwater if you go too far, but just a touch. Clarity, I'll bring up. See, that makes, it just kind of separates the plane a little bit. Uh, we'll put it at 20. Dehaze, um, that's something that when I'm shooting at a longer distance, it helps a lot, but this day was shockingly nice and had a perfect, the sun was behind us, so it looked, it came out pretty well. There wasn't a lot of haze between myself and the planes since I was so close. 
vignette, grain, all that stuff. I'll just kind of leave over to detail. Maybe bring the sharpening up a little bit. Doesn't make a huge difference when you if you're just barely moving it, but sometimes you bring it up too much, it makes makes the photo look a little bit grainy. So we'll bring it up just a tiny bit, I think. And then when it's zoomed out, you can see it kind of makes those lines a little bit crisper. Noise reduction. I think a lot of people are, have strong feelings about noise reduction. They think that they need to get it perfect in camera, but you can crank that noise reduction. On a clear picture like this, you can really crank it and it looks so smooth without losing much detail. So I actually am going to do that. Um, like I said, you wouldn't know that I did this if I wasn't showing you, but the before and after makes a big difference. And then everything else I'm gonna leave right where it's at. See, it just kind of makes it look a little bit smoother, like a little bit sharper along the edge and then nice and smooth along the body of the plane. Optics, usually this is something that you'd want to do at the beginning. You know, lens corrections, it kind of tell depending on the plane, the lens that you're using, what it does, but you know, I pretty much always do it. I don't, I mean, it doesn't look bad without it, but I pretty much always do it. Chromatic aberration, I don't know if I've ever said that out loud, but there isn't really any in this photo, so it doesn't matter. And then of course, geometry, the crop, move things around if you feel that's necessary. But I'm gonna leave this kind of just like it is. I think this looks pretty good. I mean, this is where we started, which is a pretty decent photo. And then that's the finished. So looks great. Oh, of course, put the uh, full photo up on the screen here. You're gonna wanna go through and fix these. It takes no time at all. Pick a size of the brush that uh, roughly matches, maybe a little overlaps what you're trying to fix. Zoom in and just kind of tap away, George. Bam, bam, bam. A lot of them you can't see. Once you start seeing them, you're really gonna notice them. So double tap to make it go away. Fix that. So that helps a lot. Once, yeah, like I said, once you see one, you can't stop seeing them. And I think that looks pretty good. Done. There you go. That's the finished product of this photo. So I'll go through real quick, edit all these photos pretty much the same way. This photo is very dark, obviously, but the way it's, it's dark and it's right there at the bottom. So obviously we're going to crop this a little bit, but I really liked the way it was on the other side of this tree and the way that the light was hitting it. It, it was such a bright day. And then this one plane came through with a bit of cloud cover. So I'll bring the exposure up, maybe about 50. The highlights I'm going to drop down. You can see the difference there. It gives it a little bit more texture on the plane itself. Shadows I'm going to crank way up just to, so you can see that belly of the plane. That uh, way, way up. Look at that. I'm going to knock it down one just so it looks like I didn't bring it all the way. Whites. Again, you can see the difference. I think it looks pretty good with a little bit of, a little contrast there between the top of the plane and the bottom. Blacks really just there in the windows, bring it down a little bit onto the color, bring that vibrance up a bit. Really, you can see that red just against the blue. I think it looks great. Saturation, sure, a little bit. Effects again, texture, bring it down just just a bit. I probably should have cropped this first so you can see how it's going to end up, but bring that texture down just a, just a bit. Clarity up. Dehaze really makes a difference on that background. We'll give it a tiny bit. No grain or anything else. So I'm not really a fan of grain sharpening. Maybe bring that up just a bit. And on the noise reduction. Like I said, on those other ones, I gave a ton of noise reduction and it really helps on the body of the plane. So way up there. And hopefully that hopefully that comes through how big of a difference that really is. It might seem like cheating, but it, it makes a huge difference. Everything else I'll leave. Optics, again, probably should have done this to begin with. I'll leave it, whatever. Geometry, let's go up here and kind of crop this photo down. I think it looks, let's see. I like it centered there for the most part. You know, I like I like having this in the, in the front of the plane. And if you're gonna post these photos somewhere like, somewhere like Jet Photos, then you know this they wouldn't allow this but they want that photo they want the crop to be all the way as close to on both ends of that plane as possible they want a perfect shot of just the plane 
I usually, I don't really put anything on there. I'll put things on Flickr and people will find it that way, but I'm not a jet photos type of guy. So I think that looks pretty good. Cropped in a bit. Maybe we could have, maybe we could have rotated it just a tiny, tiny bit. There we go. I think that looks great. So I think I'll actually go on to one of these darker photos like this one here. Um, as you can see, the plane was under a cloud. The shadow on all of the plane. So what I'm going to do, bring that exposure up, crank it way up, but you know, then it's ridiculous. I'll bring it up maybe one full stop and then bring the highlights down a little bit closer to match. I like, like I said, I like it to look a little bit realistic. So if that plane pops too much, then it's not, it doesn't, it, it looks like a cartoon, but I like the plane to still somewhat look like it did in the actual scene in real life. So the shadows will bring up. You can see the, how much color comes out of those trees down there at the bottom. Uh, maybe we'll go up about 50, 55. Whites back up. And there's a big difference in the whites versus the highlights. See that there. And the black's down just a bit because it's got that black tail. I think that looks pretty good. On the color, bring that vibrance up a little bit. Wow, look how, look how different that, look how different that sky looks there. And saturation in just a bit. I think it looks good there. Onto the effects. Texture down a little bit. Clarity. Sometimes cranking that clarity gives it this weird HDR look that I'm just not a very big fan of. So bring it up just a bit, but not anything crazy. Dehaze. Hmm. Yeah, if you bring it up too much, then the whole photo ends up being a little bit too dark again. Gray and everything else, not a fan. Sharpening, maybe a bit. I'm going to bring that noise reduction up because you know me. It really smooths out the plane. So there it is without, and there it is with quite a bit of it. Makes the body of the plane look much better. Maybe a little more. And then maybe we'll go over here to Healing Brush, of course, and get these little specks that I have on my sensor. I should probably do something about that. See if I can do it without zooming too much in. Tap it there. Tap it there. Tap it there. There's one up here. Done. And you can still see them. So we undo those. Whoa. Undo all the healing. And we'll zoom in and do it. Nice and easy. Bam. Like I said, with once you see them, it's hard to look hard to, for them to go away. You can see them. You can't stop looking at them. All right, so there you go. I think that looks pretty true to life. I think it's a great photo overall. Um, I like that it's a bit off center, but right there at the center is you know, Star Alliance United. And I like this tree kind of pointing right at it. But hey, whatever. It's all art. It's all subjective. And I'm not trying to make any money off of these photos. I was just out there having a good time. Throw past, I'll show you the before and after. Bam, bam. This one, before and after. And I'll quickly go through all these. So I realized as I'm sitting here going through doing all this, the best thing to do when you're shooting in a location like this and you're shoot constantly shooting a subject that's in about roughly the same place and you're in the same place is to just go like this. Copy settings, make everything except nothing crazy, boom. Settings copied and we'll go to the next dot of the same plane, paste settings, boom. Great photo. There's a little bit, maybe I bring up the shadows just a little bit more on this one. Um, it's already so bright. But, you know, that, that makes a huge difference right off the bat. Another photo from the same spot. Take this, face settings. There you go. A usable photo compared to the before. Maybe go over here, take this one, take this one's settings, copy. Oops. Copy settings, click everything, fly over here to this 
British Airways pay settings. It's a little dark, so there's of course something, some things I would change still, bring it up a little bit brighter. Um, of course, cropping, bring that in a bit on this plane. But overall, it gives you a great starting point for these photos. Next one, paste those same settings from the other plane. Just gives you, it makes it much, much quicker, much easier. And you can crank these out much faster. Paste settings, boom. Again, I'd probably crop in, do some, do a little bit more to this. But overall, it gives you a great place to start on a great photo. So I think this one is actually a pretty good example of a little bit more you could do. And let's go here to, let's go here to masking, select subject. Look how good Lightroom does at just completely selecting just the subject, just the plane. And then you can edit that to your heart's desire. That looks ridiculous, but you can see how good it does at just picking that one thing. So you can brighten it up a little bit. I think it's bright enough. You can mess with the shadows, highlights, things like that without messing up with the other things that are in the frame, like the trees and whatever else, and the clouds. Or of course, you can go through and select the sky, which is just gonna end up doing the opposite. This sky is, you know, you can do whatever you want, but it makes it a lot easier to quickly select parts of the photo without manually outlining every single little thing. So obviously let's remove all that. And there you have it. Nine photos that I think are pretty decent from, you know, a few minutes out there standing in a parking lot shooting planes. All right, so there you have it. Just a quick, simple video on how I edit these photos. Like I said, if you just edit one photo and then just copy those settings all the way across, usually unless you're out there for a long time and the sun has completely changed positions, then you'll be able to just breeze right through things. If there's anything that I missed or that you want me to elaborate on a little bit more, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll do my best. Obviously, I, don't, I have nothing but time on my hands. But I hope you enjoyed it. hope you found it useful. And I look forward to making another one from shooting from one plane to another plane or shooting from a plane while in formation. I think that'll be really cool. And I'll probably also make a video on how I use LumiFusion to edit all of this. It wasn't as easy as I was hoping it would be. So whenever I finally do that, see you then.